So the first one, let's implement the add method. And with each of these methods, the first thing that we'll do is to log the information. So we'll go to a logger dot log information. And here we will add just basic text, something that tells us what is going on in this request. So I'll use the string interpolation. And in this information, we can say that we are trying to add object of type. And we can actually type the object type itself, which is the entity dot and we can use the get type method. So this is going to be a log in a logger. So when the user tries to add any of the classes, any of the entity into the database, this information will be logged. And after that, we can now actually add the entity itself. And it's very simple. We have our context, so we'll go to our event context. And then there's a method, just like for any collection, called add. And we will simply add the entity, which is the class that the user is passing into this method. Now this only adds it to the context, it doesn't save it yet. We will do that in our save method when we code that. But this is all we need to do in this add method here. The save method itself will be called from the API request in the controller. We don't need to call it from here at all. Basically, the user will have a request to add an entity, we will add it to the context, and then in the controller, we will check if everything is okay, and if so, we'll perform the save by calling the save method from this repository. Now I'm going to copy this and also place it in the delete, because that's going to be fairly similar. We will log the information, but this one will be deleting. And instead of adding the entity to the context, we will remove it from the context. And again, from the controller, we will also call the save method. Now these methods are ordered alphabetically, but let's go down to an update because that's similar to what we did so far. And I'm going to paste those two lines there. And here it will simply say updating and the context will simply update the entity. So very simple. So here is our save method. Let's do that one now. And then we will go and do the get methods. So the save method, again, will take the logger information first, telling us that we try to save the information. So it's going to be logger dot log information. And we can simply say that we are saving changes. Now remember, we are returning a Boolean here because the method that we want to use, which is save changes async, will return the number of records that have been successfully saved in the database. Now, if the number is zero or greater, then that means that save was successful. Otherwise, it would be non-successful. Something went wrong and we would return false. Now you may wonder why zero is still okay, and that's because when we update the record, but don't actually make any changes, user will simply update the record by using the same information, then it's still a successful update, even though no information was changed, but it's not really an error. So here, after the logger, we will return, and we will do an await, because we will do this async, and we'll go to our context, even context, and perform the save changes async. And here we will simply ask if the number returned from this save changes async is greater or equal to zero. And if it is, then it will return true. If it is less than zero, then it will return false. Now, it's complaining because this says the await operator can only be used with the async method. So what we want to do is to actually make this task async. And everything is okay now. All right, so these are our first four methods for add, delete, update, and save. And next, let's do the get methods.